big debate about whether, in fact, uh, Hubble's law was discovered by Edwin Hubble in 1929. I say that because old evidence has newly come to light that Hubble's law may have been, in fact, discovered two years before him by this man, uh, Belgian priest and cosmologist uh, Georges Lemaitre. Uh, Quantum Fall was a big bang, but it's one G. Name lives on to this day, the uh, standard cosmological model of human nature, the uh, Robertson Walker model. It's uh, also been posited that three years before the nature and five before Hubble, uh, Hubble's law may have been discovered by this man, uh, Swedish astronomer Newt Lundmark, um, less well known than nature, certainly than Hubble, but uh, whose name also lives on to this day in Lundmark's law. That's Lundmark's uh, distance of observation. And I say big debate, citing these dozen papers. Uh, all published by the year, uh, way in the year 2011 alone uh, regarding uh, the subject of Hubble's primary <coughs> discovery. You know, titles like the nature of Hubble was discovered by whom, so to speak, and discovering the Spanish New Year's basically what we're talking about this morning, but what has changed is the fact that you look at a dozen papers at all. I mean, there is more papers written questioning Hubble's priorities discovery than were written all the years combined since the discovery was made in 1929. So it's a big debate in terms of the number of papers, the scientists and the scholars involved. But folks, it's also big in terms of shift, because you should know that three quarters of these papers, the ones with words highly read, are in fact con Hubble, deserving uh, at least all, and in some cases even any of the credit. There's going to be quotes uh, like Edwin Hubble uh, discovered expanding universes incorrect, uh, or look at paper nine, the myth uh, that the expansion of the universe was discovered by Edwin Hubble. And so it's a big debate in terms of numbers, it's big in terms of shift. But, uh, folks, unfortunately, it's also come rather big in terms of profile because uh, you have, in addition to <coughs> two of these lesser known authors like yours truly, can truly to the Royal Astronomical Society, kind of, you've got some very well known names here. Uh, folks, including Mary Little, the Space Telescope Science Institute, arguing appropriate <coughs> Hubble's priority. And uh, Cindy Dynaper of the Dominion Astronomical Institute, arguing con a Hubble's priority, or at least pro Lemaitre's in discovery. And, you know, they're taking it out in nature, and it, it just doesn't get any bigger in uh, science, uh, let alone historical astronomy, than nature makes it. <laughs> and so, where I think it's great to is I, I work with Ned, most of you know the NASA IPAC, Extractive Database. I work in particular with the Redshift Independent Distance Estimates, the same distance estimates, that in fact, uh, same kind of distance estimates that were in fact uh, made and used by Hubble and his contemporaries uh, to, in the first place, approve the distance scale to galaxies and then in the second place to prove the distance laceration that Hubble's law. Um, you know, these distance estimates were not just difference makers uh, and game changers in fact back then, uh, but they are to this day. And we keep track of the modern distance estimates that are being published. And as you can see, our uh, distance estimates are growing by leaps and bounds. But if you look closely, for our purposes this morning, you see we also um, keep track of the historic distance estimates. That were published up to including 1903, right? I mean, the very distance estimates were published uh, by Hubble and his contemporaries to prove the respective cases. And we look in on these, we can see, we can trace the very first estimate of any galaxy, uh, if you want to make your way back, as far as we can tell, uh, all the way to 1840. We're going to fast forward to uh, 1924 at Wadham where we can see some first distance estimates <coughs> by uh, New Glenmark. And in fact, you can see that's a fairly large compilation of uh, estimates by Lindmark. He's regarded the distance scale as well as the distance velocity relation. And then we'll skip forward and you can see uh, some of uh, Hubble's distance estimates from 1926, those regarding the distance scale. And then here we have Hubble's uh, distance estimates from 1929 regarding the distance velocity relation. Uh, and our compilation of historical distance estimates concludes um, with uh, some estimates by theoreticians consider. But our point is, uh, we're positioned perfectly in that to be able to compare uh, the distance estimates, uh, not only of Hubble and his contemporaries with one another in the era, so to speak, but we can in fact compare those original historical distance estimates head-to-head uh, -head with the distance estimates uh, we have published today in uh, in NED. And when we do this, you'll see that uh, Lundmark's estimates have come out pretty well. I mean, we've got the original distance estimates uh, on the vertical compared with the modern estimates that we keep track of on the horizontal. And of course, they agree with Stephen Munn for when they fall on the score of the blue dash line. And Lomar's estimates are actually quite close. He comes, on average, uh, 90 years ago to within 0 0.73. His estimates are on average going to 73 percent of the modern value. Incredible. Problem. And we compare uh, Hope's research uh, 
from 1926. His, his estimates are off by an order of magnitude. I mean, they're, they're 0 0.13, they're, they're within 10% on average of the modern value. So, uh, how this Hubble, with this very research by the way, of credit in 1926, which discovery of the distance scale in the first place, and not there. And the answer is, Lindmark's entire distance scale hinges uh, on this one single calorie we have to the larger dot there. And uh, it's, it's got a completely unfounded, untried, and, and such a bad distance scale. I don't know why we did it so bad, but you can see it's a factor of the upper line. But the, what's worse is he's extrapolating from its one calorie in the galaxy uh, based on a, a really rather un, un, unfounded uh, distance. And he's, he's using the apparent dynamics of the galaxy, so assuming smaller further. But as we know, the galaxies are all different sizes, and so that really doesn't work. You want this huge scatter, as you can see. And it's really, it's only luck, albeit the kind of luck that comes from hard work. But luck, nonetheless, if Lodemar gets as close as it does to, to modern estimates. And in fact, when you compare his research to Hubble's from 1926, it really is no comparison because uh, Hubble is using not one calorie in the galaxy, uh, but six. He's got half a dozen uh, galaxies, and these have distance estimates based on not. Uh, Unfounded technique, but uh, uh, bar not the most proven distance indicating uh, method uh, then to this day is using second spherical stars in, uh, in the distant galaxies. And he's, he's uh, extending from these uh, based on not one uh, but two distance indicating methods. And in fact, one of those still used to this day is using brightest stars uh, observed in distant galaxies, so fainter further. And then this other uh, method is the apparent answer. The point, point is the multiple calibrators. Multiple methods of proven pedigree of the uh, distance indicating techniques. These are taken as proof uh, in 1926 as Hollis discovered the true extragalactic distance that showed that say Lamarck had evidence, uh, but it was Hubble that came along with the right of proof. The very same thing is true of the discovery of the distance blast tradition. We see uh, Hubble's research in 1929. Right? Again, we're going to compare with Lamarck in 1924. I promise we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, but you should know that uh, Lamarck. Uh, in 1924, five years before Hubble, three before Major, published a Hubble graph. I, I mean, velocity versus distance graph. And making this up, here's his original 1924 graph. You can see velocity published per second. We was cleaning it up from his uh, uh, distance scale and drama units to modern parsec. And uh, it's interesting when you actually look in on Lenormand's research, it's uh, quite clever because. Uh, as a scientist, he knows he's got this huge scatter of 42 galaxies, and he's uh, going about that uh, it's in that up by dividing into two separate groups. So you've got the rear one with uh, 23 galaxies, and the front one with 18. And if you look in the modern backdrop, right, you can see Lundmark knows that this near group of galaxies is an average distance of 6.2 megaparsecs, and the further one is about double that distance of 11 uh, megaparsecs. But the point is, Lundmark also knows, in his own right, that the near group has got a lower session velocity of 386. Kilometers per second part of it has got a higher session velocity than 63. And that is Hubble's law. I mean, he's saying that the part of the galaxies on average have higher session velocity. In fact, if Lunar had gone just a bit farther, he could have calculated the coefficient of the Hubble concept, group 1 of uh, 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 h equals uh, 62, uh, group uh, 2 h equals 8, the mean of which, uh, and our point is, he could have gotten, and as you see as the bold cost there, he would have gotten a Hubble constant of h equals 75 kilometers per second. Process. Now, we're not putting words in Lundmark's mouth or ours. Uh, he never actually wrote out H equals 75. But we are saying, uh, with Lundmark's own uh, research and numbers, uh, his work was consistent with value of H equals 75. And it's incredible contract because to this day, folks, the most accurate estimate of Hubble constant ever made uh, is, in fact, within 2% of that value. That's the value by Adam Rees uh, and colleagues of H equals 73.8, within 2 or 3%. Uh, Adam Reese, of course, co-winner of the 2000 Nobel Prize in Physics for his research on expansion. In fact, it's apparently accelerating. Incredible accomplishment, and hats off. But also amazing that Lindmark, uh, with the results from 90 years ago, uh, could be uh, this uh, consistent with, uh, with current research. Uh, and so why does he not get any recognition for this situation? And the answer is, and, and it's just leaving totally aside uh, the fact that these are the same 1924 Lindmark distance estimates that were intercepted as Proof of the distance scale in the first place, our suspect. The, the real answer is that, that Lundmark, he literally uh, never connected the dots. Uh, in his I mean, he never drew a line in his velocity versus distance graph in relation to velocity and distance. He never um, uh, wrote an equation B over D equals H or anything like a constant. He never uh, even wrote out in text his relation. In fact, what he did write was there might be a relation to velocity and distance, uh, although his own words, quote, not very definite. Well, now, 
contrast that uh, research and published from 1929. Again, there's just there's no comparison. Hubble's uh, paper, by the way, is titled A Relation. It's a very definite relation between distance velocity and inertia. Uh, right. You know, Hubble, every legal, legal lawyer by training, uh, again, uses uh, multiple calibrators, uh, multiple methods, multiple lines of evidence to prove conclusively, shadow of a doubt, yes, there is a relation between the velocity and distance. And here it is, uh, whether you base it on 24 galaxies of H equals 465, or the same galaxies uh, separated in nine different mm -hmm. groups, H equals 513, and 22 control galaxies, H equals 532. The bottom line is Hubble comes up with me with these three methods of H is 500 kilometers per second per minute second. My activity is sure it's high, but as we saw, this distance goes toward the moon. Uh, this estimate lived for decades. And it was this research that was taken as a proof of the discovery of the, uh, the distance velocity relation. So we can sum uh, by saying, sure, 1924 uh, little mark discovered observational evidence for the exergalactic distance scale and observational evidence for the expansion of the universe. Uh, but it was helpful. In 1926, it was given to reach proof of the uh, distance scale, and it was helpful. In 1929, it was given to reach proof of the expansion. Now, that's Hubble and Lunar, uh, but as promised, the main event, Hubble is a new adventure, and that is because uh, uh, more people have become increasingly aware, uh, especially recently, uh, that where we just saw Hubble uh, get a Hubble constant in 1929 of 500 uh, kilometers per second. Uh, we uh, now realize that uh, George Major, in his 1927 paper um, producing the theory of expansion that is uh, still in part with us today, uh, actually came up with a Hubble constant in that paper uh, of h equals 625 kilometers per second. Well, that's amazing for two reasons. One, uh, he's within 25% of the value that Hubble would get for two more years. And then two, it's two years before Hubble. <laughs> so, uh, another thing, including Sidney Lamiger and others, take this publication as proof that Lemaitre discovered the distance velocity relation. But that is overly generous. I mean, please, you could say Lemaitre discovered the distance velocity relation in theory, but you could say that he discovered observation proof, uh, which is a whole other kettle of fish, much harder to hold. You know, we're not making this semantic or splitting hairs. Uh, it's interesting to theoretically discover an observation one. It is not small to scientists who lost on the Nobel Prize Committee, uh, who, uh, in their wisdom, awarded the prize in physics, as you know, in 1978, to Colbert, Pinsize, and Wilson for their discovery, uh, observational discovery, the cosmic microwave background radiation. We're making the point that they did not award it uh, to the theoretical discoveries of background radiation. That's uh, Ralph Alford, Shelby, and uh, Pauli. But as, as you know, uh, it was Alpha Herman Gamma who discovered the theory of background radiation in 1940, decades before it was discovered observation, even predicted the temperature and stuff to factor two would actually turn out to be. They did not win the Nobel Prize. Uh, the observation discoveries did. And Lemaitre should not be given credit for discovering a public law of the observation discoveries should. Uh, and in fact, the distinction uh, between theoretical and observational discovery uh, and credit where credit is due here is not lost on theoretician uh, Lemaitre, who, in his own work, and this is decades after this discovery, this is 1952, uh, Lemaitre himself credits Hubble with the discovery of Hubble's law by writing, I quote, they, He's talking about galaxies. <coughs> galaxies have been utilized by Hubble and Hudson to establish from observation the linear relation between the distance and velocity, which was expected for theoretical reasons, <coughs> the nature's yes, but which is now known as Hubble's, not the nature, the Hubble uh, velocity distance relation. So uh, the nature quite correctly uh, credits uh, Hubble with the discovery, and that is because you could sum by saying, uh, as we did in 1924, shortly. Observation events for the expansion of the universe, and as we just saw, sure, 1927, uh, the discovered theoretical evidence for expansion. But again, uh, it was Hubble in 1929 who discovered observational proof. So that leads us to uh, here and now and Long Beach Convention Center. Uh, you can see we're already rolling the credits. There's about a dozen uh, people that could have been mentioned in this uh, presentation, uh, only three of which uh, who have been. Um, and I hope if we have time for questions, somebody, anyone, if you've heard of uh, uh, or read this book, please, I'm begging, ask me, you know, I'm telling you, without this book, uh, essentially everything you've just seen, 